It's no secret that I make the worst synthesizer videos on this platform. With this Chuck's power supply turned on, uh, which is what I just plugged into the surge protector there, we see that the uh, Chuck's, Chuck's power supply DC7 is up and ready to go. All of the ports, are, they're all in use, uh, but the devices that uh, these are plugged into, they're not on, uh, except for maybe a few pedals. So, what I want to get to is this one here, the 24 volt DC output, which uh, is here, and it might normally be used to power a Chux 8, which would supply this one uh, with uh, eight more uh, outlets, uh, the Chux 8's uh, DC 8 expander. Uh, you know, you've probably seen it before, but there's other uses for this uh, power cable. And if you get one of, uh, which of course you will if you buy the Chucks um, 8, you'll get a, a, a link cable. It's one end is black, uh, which is the one that goes inside here. The other end is red, which uh, f standard for Chucks is uh, center positive. So this C4 link, basically, it's the uh, it's the E I A G J. Uh, it's it's like a, a big cable with a with a little center pin in it, different from the normal um, guitar powered uh, barrel connectors. And there's different lengths of them. So what I've got plugged into here is the longest version. So you have to kind of buy that separately. It's this this one here, L2160, and See, it uh, powers the Chux 4 or Chux 8 from this link um, cable. Anyway, instead of using that, I've got it plugged into the back of the Kajimi. Now, uh, we'll go around and turn it on. See if it works. Of course it works. Now, the Kajimi, if you look on the back of it, is 24 volts. center positive so it works now when that powers on this this thing is a is like a big beefy rack mount synthesizer it takes up four units of space and on the Chuck's power supply we see that this green light is now on uh, that's 40 percent up on the max uh, maximum percentage of, of uh, current that, that can be drawn out of the Chuck's four so um, you don't definitely you could uh, um, draw too much power with a device like this, but it's holding up nicely. Now, I won't go over the synthesizer. I don't even, I probably won't even have any uh, sound demos in this one because that Ricky guy has already done all of that. But, and this comes down to me posting this video or not, can I focus on this tiny screen? Okay, pushing the knob switches it from preset mode to panel mode. That P and L makes it so that in panel mode, everything, how you have it set, is that there's like the real time control. Um, so yeah, what, whatever you set is on here will be the sound that you have it on. So uh, if you want to go back to presets, you just press, this is, this is an encoder that also pushes in. Uh, and this bottom row of boxes can't really see it at all uh, this is the number of voices so you know like on the Novation Summit when you're pressing down keys it, it, it shows you well, the voices along the top left corner the all the voices that are in use and and the and then they they have little LEDs that lights up and then the ones that are aren't lit are the voices that uh, aren't in use uh, so uh, this uh, will always show you on the bottom here. Uh, they're all numbered, these tiny little squares, the one through eight. So if you pressed and hold shift and press the back button, you'll go into settings. And the knob is to, I mean, this 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 encoder will change the different settings. First one is retune. The next one is MIDI. Then voice. Then LFO arpeggiator. Preset volume, external time, calibration, about, reset settings. And those are all the uh, settings in the menu. Very small, very easy. If we want to go into one of these settings to edit it, we, we have these three buttons. This is enter, this is back, this is shift. 
So again, um, back will get us back out of here, and and we're switching between panel mode and preset mode, right? But back also switches between those as well. So to get into settings, hold, press and hold shift, and then this screen will change. Because instead of save load, holding shift, this changes these two buttons from save load into bank and settings. So we can mess around our settings and then press the enter button to save it, uh, our settings into a preset slot. Or we can, uh, if we want to go to a different bank of presets, we hold shift and press enter button. But hold, uh, holding shift and press back, like we showed before, gets us into settings. And in settings, um, you've got a voice, the third option is voice, and we have different voice settings. You can't see this, but uh, it's monophonic, polyphonic, and unison. Unison is just like monophonic, only is using all the voice cards at once for one note, and monophonic is uh, just one voice, one 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 voice card, and then polyphonic. Uh, I think this is eight voice. Of course, it says eight voice right here. Uh, eight voice analog synthesizer by Black Corporations. Uh, that's the Kajimi, and um, that's you hold down eight notes, uh, vo vo uh, eight notes at the same time. Now in mode. Uh, because we are in voice, pressing enter gets us into those those monophonic, polyphonic unison. But if we're in pol polyphonic, we can decide differently how the voices are assigned to each key press. So um, we can, if we press down one key, uh, then it'll do one card. But we can make it, say, do two cards instead. Two or four. So we have one, two, or four. So in polyphonic mode, we, you, where you have eight voices, you could limit yourself, say, use up all the voice cards by pressing down two notes, because you've taken those eight cards and, and you, you're using four cards uh, for one note. That means if you use, press down two notes, you're using up all of your poly polyphony. Um, I'm probably getting my terms all wrong, but I just want to show you like what is in this menu and how does it work and what can you do with it inside here without looking at the manual because you might have trouble finding the manual online. Uh, you can also uh, bring down the number of voice cards that you have to assign. Maybe maybe you don't want eight eight cards of voices, or one of them fall out. You, you know, and uh, theoretically you only have seven voices. Well, you can adjust that in the settings. <laughs> oh no! Um, anyways, yeah, that's about it. Uh, shoot, man. Oh no. I mean, MIDI, MIDI, you could, you could do, you can, you can, there's this, okay, in MIDI, the second of, uh, choice is channel uh, after touch, which, uh, you can you can make it go, I mean you can make it go channel pressure poly after touch or e, e, MPE. So if you have an MPE controller, um, there's different settings for this. If you have a polyphonic after touch, such as could be found in the Mellotron M4000D full size or the Hydrosynth then you want to set that to poly aftertouch. If you have a regular synthesizer that has aftertouch like the ordinary Digitone keys that's just channel after touch, then set that to channel pressure. Uh, so there's definitely some settings, depending on what you control the synthesizer with, that you'll need to check into with the MIDI settings. Um, there we go. Um, I don't know if I can hold the camera so steady. Sorry. Again, I make the worst videos online. So uh, yeah, holding We'll get you into settings. That's retune. That's MIDI voice. And we can go into voice. Press, pressing this. Then we'll give, we can press back. Avoid, adjust these the number of cards per voice. Things like that. Uh, Aleph, Aleph A level. Aleph. I mean, uh, these get into confused with Aleph A O and V C A. <coughs> pardon. I beg your pardon. Sustain, oh, I don't know what that means. Some sort of different uh, type of sustain pedals. LFO, arpeggiator, 
yeah, calibration, all this cool stuff in the menu. A lot of this is all analog, you know, I might go out of tune. So uh, yeah, I know. I shouldn't have this. Don't worry about that though. <laughs> I won't for long.